Hey guys, it's Clovis, and today I'm going to talk a bit about the AI in Duelist of the Roses. Uh, before I continue though, the information in this video is based by findings from Generic Mad Scientist, uh, so check the description for a document by him that tracks his findings of the inner workings of the game. If you're someone who really likes this sort of thing, looking into the, the background of the game, the coding and stuff, definitely check out this document. There's a lot of information, a lot I can't really comprehend, and I also want to comment that uh, we are still trying to figure out a lot of these uh, TA logic strings, uh, but today I really want to talk about uh, just the ones where kind of under the belief we understand, just some interesting findings or things that I found interesting that I thought were uh, noteworthy to share. So part of this document shows a string of AI logic functions which begin with the text TA logic followed by an underscore, then a few words that give a general description of what the function does. These are strings of text left in the original Japanese version of the game that were removed in the worldwide versions. So this is pretty cool because they're not actually intended to be seen by anyone who isn't the developers of the game, uh, but we have located them and they will be used to try and help figure out what these AI behaviors do uh, according to the certain functions. Today in this video we'll have a look at some of these AI functions and talk about what I find interesting. So generally a line of code begins with either TA logic underscore or TA logic number 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 underscore. These numbers correspond to the specific AI it was made for. For example, Seto is the first AI in the game as far as the data is concerned on the list. He has a few commands that have TA logic 001 underscore as the prefix. These 001 tag TA logic lines of code pretty much explicitly tell us that these functions are specific to this duel list and were probably also made just for them. In future videos, I'd like to cover some of the number specific lines across different duel lists, but in this video, I want to focus on something strange uh, in that Seto Kaiba has a bunch of TA logic tags that are not numbered but share a term in common with Deckmaster K, who is also actually Shardy's AI. Uh, interestingly enough, but uh, Deckmaster K is known for being this omnipotent, or as far as the game is concerned, the most knowledgeable AI duelist and the most capable of doing different things. There's also another peculiar tag of TA logic underscore, which is TA logic com underscore. Only Deckmaster K and Setos AI actually have functions containing the TA logic com underscore prefix. The reason I say this tag is peculiar is the lack of number insinuates it is a non-specific tag that could be applied by any AI, which makes sense if they only gave it to Deckmaster K, which is the more sandboxy deck, but they also gave it to Seto Kaiba, who is the first AI in the game and seemingly one of the most complex for kind of arbitrary reasons we don't fully understand why, uh, we can only really speculate on this again. It may be that they originally wanted Seto's AI as the generic one, and then eventually turned it into the Seto duel, so they just overlaid a bunch of functions on him. We can't really conclude why Seto Kaiba has these tags, but we can look into what they do as a way to introduce us to some of the functions, so let's talk about some of these. So, quick note that anything with the word is following the underscore represents a yes or a no value. For these, imagine a green and a red light, and when the value is yes, or also you can say true, it is a green light, and if the value is no, or false, it acts as a red light. This analogy might come in handy when understanding how the is logic functions work. I won't use this analogy for the entire video, but I will use it for the upcoming function example. You'll notice Seto does not have TA logic com underscore is use revive, but instead he actually has his own numbered TA logic 001 underscore is use revive. So let's talk about is use revive first. The number 001 tells us that this tag was programmed specifically for Seto Kaiba's AI, in contrast to the TA logic com, which you would have a more general use of what that function does in the context of Deckmaster K, who we probably already know is capable of reviving a different set of monsters than Seto Kaiba. So if you've played against Seto Kaiba enough times, you notice that quite often he revives Blue Eyes White Dragon. TA logic 001 is numbered for a specific AI, and it actually tells Seto to first check for a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon in the graveyard. If not, then it checks for a Blue Eyes White Dragon. If not, then it is false until either of these monsters enter the graveyard. 
So this basically acts as a traffic light to give Seto the approval to activate his revive card, which is a monster reborn. So in this analogy, the green light turns on whenever a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon or Blue Eyes White Dragon are in the graveyard, and this green light is what is telling Seto he can go ahead to activate his revival spell card to revive the mentioned cards. If there are neither of those monsters in the graveyard, this light remains red and Seto doesn't have to go ahead to activate a revival spell card, and it won't until that light goes green, in the same sense that you are not allowed to continue past the traffic light uh, unless it turns green. So if we boil it down, the purpose of this function is to let Seto know exactly that it is a good idea for him to use Monster Reborn and revive one of his most powerful monsters from the graveyard. And this means he will only ever voluntarily activate or complete a move that results in him activating a Monster Reborn if one of those two monsters is present in the graveyard. And this completely contrasts Deckmaster K's own string of Is Use Revive. Um, Deckmaster K, unlike Seto Kaiba, has its own function for figuring out what monsters to revive, which is a bit more complex than simply checking the materials in a graveyard. And because all the monsters in the game with Revive Card have Revive functions, I'd like to go through them in their own video while we use this time in the video to explain some of the other functions that are a bit simpler in nature. For anyone whose curiosity is piqued, uh, the short version of that revival method is that Deckmaster K revives a monster, he will attempt to select a monster with 2500 attack or higher, and if he revives a spell, he will choose to revive the highest deck cost card. Um, however, this is a bit more complex than this, and as I said, I'd like to go into more detail in a later video. So, now that we know how these is functions work, we can continue talking about the other ones that have been somewhat made sense of. Most of these, unless I clarify otherwise, are basically all but confirmed. You can kind of look at the name and get a good idea of what they do, and with simple testing, some of these have been proven. Other, they're a bit more difficult to test, but the assumption is basically all but true. So, TA Logic com underscore is do serem. Uh, you might be wondering what is a serem? Well, serem is short for ceremony. Um, this is actually a call to check if the player has eligible materials to complete a ritual summon. Again, it makes sense for any deck with a possible ritual monster combination to have this, but only Deckmaster K and Seto have this function that ultimately seems to call for any applicable ritual combination. Basically, if the AI has the three materials needed for a ritual summon present on the field, this function returns true and gives the green light for the AI to activate the corresponding ritual spell that has those eligible materials. A bit of an interesting one is TALogic.com underscore is open unit. Uh, this actually returns false if the unit is face up, which is perhaps the opposite of what it should be. Um, but generally what this function suggests is that uh, it does know to treat a card differently based on if it is face up or not. Uh, imagine it is perhaps a red light for the AI perhaps, and uh, for what it is, I'm actually not 100% sure as it could serve as a purpose to interact with uh, other logic functions that actually need to check if a card is face up or face down, but at the moment all we really know uh, is that this basic, the purpose of this function is basically to determine if a card is face up or face down. In the same way the game uses the word open in the open card leader ability uh, that will literally flip a card face up, which is, uh, according to this game, uh, synonymous with being open. Next up we have one that I am really personally interested in, and it was probably due to the fact that as soon as I read the name I had a good idea of what it is, and that is TALogic.com underscore get use XY range spell. Um, it's interesting because it pretty much straight up tells us that it has to do with a spell that has an X and Y range, meaning that it has an effect that works on the vertical and horizontal tiles. Uh, so basically, when you break it down, it means that this is a logic function for Raigeki and or Harpy's Feather Duster. Again, it's sensible for Deckmaster K to have Get Use XY range spell, as it is possible for him to have Raigeki or Harpy's Feather Duster if you go into the custom duel with these cards into your deck and duel Deckmaster K. The interesting thing, however, is that Seto Kaiba does not actually have a Raigeki or Harpy's Feather Duster in his deck. Uh, however, it is possible for Seto to Destiny draw a Raigeki, in which case 
get use xy range spell is the only function he has that allows him to actually determine what he would do if he destiny draws Regeki. I don't currently know the exact statistics needed to meet the condition for this command, but we do know that the two duelists in the game that actually do have Rageki, which are Richard and Yugi, have their own specific get use thunderbolt logic function to determine when those duelists have the green light to play Rageki. And yes, thunderbolt is literally the original Japanese name of Rageki, so it's pretty obvious uh, that what that TA logic inter uh, interacts with. Yet another logic function that requires its own video to fully analyze uh, is the Exodia functions, uh, but obviously here we have TA logic com underscore is X parts, um, and this simply checks if a card is an Exodia piece, and this makes a lot of sense for Deckmaster K to have this, especially seeing as uh, the Deckmaster T custom tool literally has an Exodia deck leader with the pieces in its deck. However, I have no idea why this was given to Seto, and this is part of the whole speculation thing. Again, they probably just gave Seto a bunch of Deckmaster K's functions, or the other way around, they wanted to make Seto as a Deckmaster K type do it all deck and eventually made it more specific. I, I honestly don't know why. Um, <laughs> I have no idea why Seto Kaiba has a flag to check for Exodia parts. Next up is another favorite of mine, uh, TA Logic Com underscore Get Revolt Obj, which you assume Obj is object, which is something that hasn't really been looked to in great detail, but I believe I actually understand what it is, and I'm curious as to why Soto Kaiba has this, but it would be for the same reason that he has all these other commands. So again, one can only speculate. Why I think it's curious that he has it compared to the other ones is because I personally believe the term Revolt is to do specifically with the opponent taking control of your card, as the word Revolt appears in strings of the text of AI that have a spell card that changes control of the opponent's monster. Seto Kaiba and Deckmaster K both have TA Logic Com underscore Get Revolt object, whereas Pegasus and Yugi's AI have number specific Revolt functions. Seto only has TA Logic Com underscore Get Revolt object, whereas the other AI who have or could possibly have monster control effects have TA Logic underscore Get Minimum Task underscore Revolt mission. And as far as I know, Get Minimum Task is a string of text that basically prioritizes uh, this mission, uh, which you would assume is the action that the AI wants to perform. Minimum being minimum in a list of all the queued orders that it has, so I assume get minimum task is the player, or the AI rather, immediately wants to do this revolt mission as the game calls it. And to be totally anticlimactic, the TA logic com underscore is use obj effect function is currently unknown, uh, but my not so educated guess is that this is when the AI wants to activate the effect of a monster. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, I'm not even going to say that I'm correct because I feel like it would say monster instead of uh, object effect if that was the case. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure on what this function is and it's something that will require testing and perhaps we can talk about in a future video. As you know already, I've already have like three or four videos that I need to make to further clarify some of these more complex functions. Um, so this is the only one out of the ones I've discussed today where I genuinely has, have no idea what it is. That's just my guess, uh, so that I can say that I covered all of the ones that I mentioned and listed earlier in the video. And uh, in, in reality, it could be something completely different. Um, so yeah, I don't know, perhaps object means it interacts with something else and calls a different string of conditions. I honestly have no idea. So. Uh, yeah, uh, again, we've only really gone into a fraction of the TA logic function strings, and the TA logic function strings are only a fraction of the total AI functions of different lists. Uh, so, starting with the TA logic ones seem like the, the AI quirks and the sort of idiosyncrasies that they do. So, I'm not really sure about this general use one. I really, really have no idea. Um, Again, if it's a Deckmaster K thing, it could just be because you can give Deckmaster K any variety of monster effects. Um, it could perhaps be nature effects. Uh, I'm not fully sure, but if you actually pay attention, this is a funny little glitch for you. 
If you have Deckmaster K AI, and this comes up in uh, the Deckmaster K AI duels in the uh, Redux mod, just to quickly plug that, if they play a monster that has a nature effect, one of those uh, face-up defense effects, you know, um, for example, Pumpkin, right? Face-up defense, it increases all zombies by 100 attack and defense. Everyone knows that card, so I think that's a good example. Um, is use object effect may be that every single time it plays a nature effect card, it automatically puts it in face-up defense position. This is intentional, but the funny thing is, um, unlike, for example, I think some monsters with face-up defense effects, for example, Necromancer, aka Bones, he is still capable of attacking with Pump King. He has his own flags, which we'll have to look into later. But if you give Deckmaster K only face-up nature effect monsters, all he will do is play a monster and flip it in face-up defense mode and just leave it there. Even if you walk up right into the direct attack range of these face-up defense monsters, he will literally never attack you. Um, unfortunately, things are way more complex than this. Uh, for example, Nemuriko, I believe, has its own flag, whether it wants to use it or not, based off of if you have warriors or not. Uh, but for the most part, even if the enemy takes control of one of your face-up defense mode monsters next to your deck leader, using uh, any of the revolt object functions, once it takes control of the card, it will just leave it in face-up defense mode because Deckmaster K thinks the best and, well, only way to use face-up defense nature monsters is to just leave them in face-up defense mode to keep their effect active. So, thanks again to Generic Mad Scientist who has extracted all this information from the game. Um, as I find this stuff incredibly interesting, and I hope you guys did too, normally I don't really like talking about things that I don't have a huge amount of knowledge on, so I uh, risk being wrong in this video. Uh, but generally, considering no one's looking into these functions really except GMS and myself um, and discussing what they mean and uh, periodically testing it, I think it's better than nothing, you know? I think it's worth putting this information out there and getting people talking, because this is the really cool stuff about the game and it relates to a lot of the problem solving that I had to do when uh, trying to pick AI to make the Duels of Ruth redux mods. So, um, seeing as I've actually <laughs> plugged it at the end of the video here, I may as well uh, put it at the end screen. I, I hope I don't forget to do this, that would be terrible. Um, or like a card just showing that trailer for anyone who has not played it. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone for watching. I hope you found the video entertaining and I will see you guys in the next video which may or may not be to do with the AI. Thanks, see you later.